everyone here together with Scott. Scott Hickel, I mean, I think all of you know him already, so uh, no, no further introduction necessary. Uh, and we are going to just talk about, uh, again, about developments that are quite uh, relevant and important in that way. And of course, we're going to try to make associations between the past and the present or, or the, the near future, if you want, uh, about what happened back then and uh, how it how it comes back in the future, in the end times especially. So uh, I would say let's shoot. Uh, maybe we could start in the past uh, uh, with what happened uh, in the days of Noah, because I mean, uh, the sons of Elohim, the so-called watchers, they came on the earth already in the days of Jared. Have you have you seen that already? Yes. And and, and what is very important what, what is very interesting is Jared is the sixth from Adam. <laughs> yeah, it's not isn't, that far removed. Isn't that removed. interesting? He is the sixth generation from Adam. <laughs> yeah, it's not that far removed. But keep in mind they lived for a you know obviously a very long time. Yes. Um, so it is a little different, but, you know, it's amazing to me how you can, you know, looking back in the Old Testament, how you can trace. Yeah. You know, and people always say, oh, how do you know the Bible's real? Well, I mean, it's an account of the way people lived. It's a detailed account. It's a historical yep. document. It, it matches all the rec prerequisites to say, exactly. okay, this is an accurate historical yep. document of the way people lived. And you can trace, yep. you know, Adam to Cain to Enoch. Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, yeah. and then trace that all the way to Abram and Nimrod, yes. this yes. relationship Fantastic. all the way down to the 12 yeah. tribes and all the way to Jesus. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and then there's stories and real events that take place in all of these generations that are talked about by multiple different sources so that we know this is a historically accurate account exactly. of, yes. of what happened. I mean, yes. this is as as real as it gets. Exactly. But, um, yeah. And yeah, of course, I, I, scripture doesn't mention that much and doesn't go that deeply in these things. But what scripture mentions is truth. And we we can also read apoc apocrypha books, but we, we need to know that while I think a, quite a portion of that is also true, but another portion is not true. So we need to be handling that with more care, of course, in terms of the truth. Yeah, and one thing, you know, I will reference a few Apocrypha books, um, but the one thing about Scripture, you know, statements are made and it's like, whoa, you know, how did that happen? Like, okay, yeah. God gives Abram a message. Okay, your descendants are in all this, and then boom, moves on. Yeah. Well, some of the apocryphal books that I think are historically accurate, like Jubilee and, and Jasher, they just talk about that history and the details of all that coming about. It doesn't say anything contrary to scripture. It just gives more no. details into the lives yeah. of those people. I mean, it's into the lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it makes them more real. It makes them a lot more yeah. real to me anyway, the because you, you see everything leading up to those events that are just hit on and then moved on exactly, in the actual yeah. scripture. Yeah, that, that's also what I recognize and also while reading them. The only thing why I am a bit more careful with apocrypha books is because those additional that additional information is, uh, I think, not everything true. So some things are maybe a bit, a bit imagined or fantasized, uh, you know, a little bit, or maybe exaggerated. You can say it uh, also like that. Uh, so it's additional info and it gives a lot more picture and a lot more, uh, what is the word, flavor to uh, to something to understand it better. But we need to be careful, I think. So I, I do that for myself, that I knowing that not everything is true. Just let, just that. Maybe 80 percent is true, but mm -hmm. not everything is true. And that's uh, and that's what I keep in the back of my mind, so to speak. But it's very interesting, definitely. In, in, in Enoch, you can read about the fact that those watchers came down in the days of Jared 
And what I then know from scripture is that the Jared, Jared is the sixth from Adam. Very interesting. And it's also what is very interesting is that they came on the earth more than a thousand years before the flood. Because then the corruption already started. Yeah. And God gave, um, you know, a warning. And yeah. it wasn't just like it happened and then the next day God, you know, announced the flood. I mean, yeah. again, right. you know, and I, I take this with a grain of salt based on what you just said with the apocryphal books. But in the in Jasher, it says it's either Jasher or Jubilees. I'm not sure. It says that God gave either 100 and was it 120 years or 150 yes. years. Yes. He started talking about how he was going to send this flood exactly. on these people if they continued in their ways. But and it, Noah went out and pronounced this for 100. Yeah. You know, he lived to be exactly. Yeah. A very long but, time. He pronounced it for 100 and some years before it's it actually also, happened. But it's also written in, in scripture. It's in Genesis 6, I think 6 verse 3, something like that. There you see that God says that my spirit will not contend in that sense, not content with humanity for always. So it's still 120 years. So I think that warning was 120 years before the flood. However, if you look at it from a deeper perspective, then uh, God is talking about 120 jubilee years. And a jubilee cycle is 50 years always. Mm -hmm. So the jubilee years, every 50 years is a jubilee year. So if you multiply 120 times 50, what do you get? 6,000 years. <laughs> exactly the length of the day of man. Interesting. And, and yeah, and we are at the end of that now. Just 10, 10 uh, 11 years to go. Well, 10 years, I would say, uh, a little bit over 10 years, because we just entered in 5990, 5990. That's the year we are in now from Adam. We just entered that half September. So, um, so still 10 years to go and then uh, finito. And back in the day, going back to Genesis 6, um, how the sons of humanity um, or the sons of Elohim took to the daughters of man and went down and corrupted them and they bore children. The women did called the Nephilim that we've, yep. you know, we've hit on before. Yes. And what those sons of Elohim were doing back then, I think we can draw a lot of parallels to what government leaders and what people in this day and age are doing as well. Um, I don't think there's anything new under the sun. I mean, even no. Jesus Christ himself said that, you know, in the last days, it'll be like the days of Noah. And what was going exactly. on in the days of Noah? Well, the sons of Elohim were coming down and, and messing with humanity. I mean, yes. I think there are two major things, um, two major reasons why God sent the flood was this gene DNA mutation. Uh, exactly. You know, again, another apocrypha book, the book of giants. But elsewhere it talks about how they didn't just mess with women and humanity they messed with every creature yeah i mean 200 exactly. of every species that there yeah. is yeah. and messing with god's order they're provoking yeah. god because they want to mess with god's order the same thing yes. that's going on today oh, a man's not a man uh, he can be a woman and all that exactly. crap yeah. yeah is is messing with the order of things but also yep. you know um these people turned away and rejected god and went to their idols the son the sons of elohim and then they worship worship them through idols of exactly of stone and wood yeah yeah and that's actually yeah. what abram's dad did yes that's for what he did yeah nimrod yeah. he was nimrod's yeah. prince and he yeah. made those idols and then that story he was an important went, yeah he was important love, in nimrod's army yeah and if we get into it i want to tell the story of abram and what he did based in yeah in jasher which i just makes me yeah. like abraham a yeah. lot more yeah yeah exactly I don't know yeah. if we want to yeah. get that detailed but i can yeah. i can draw the relationship from the sons of elohim back then and yeah. these people are 
the rule our world are taking their orders straight from them, just like yes. going back to the Tower yes. of Babel. You know, By the way, they they also taught humanity at a time. They they taught them uh, tricks and tips. They taught them to they taught humanity to make weapons, as an example, to make war, how to make war, things like mm -hmm. that. Also to make instruments and things like that. So they taught humanity and they started with the bloodline of Cain. That's where they started. So with a, a descendant of Cain, uh, his name was also Lamech. And then he had two wives. I think he was the first man with two wives. And then he had chil children with the two wives, uh, Tubal Cain. Uh, um, oh, what's their name? Uh, Jubal. Jubal. And these people, they had, they made deals with them, with the sons of Elohim, so that uh, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you this, and then you get my daughter. You know things like that. And and so they traded. So uh, they uh, at one with one wife, uh, Lamech had a daughter named Nema. I, I I think she was the first mother of a Nephilim. It started with her. Because her name was mentioned, and when scripture mentions a name specifically, then you know there's something going on with that, always. So by, by, but fast forward, uh, after the flood, you mentioned Abraham and Nimrod. They had a, indeed a very, uh, well, Abraham's family and Nimrod, they had a strange relationship. And that relationship was also a bit based on jealousy. There was some jealousy going on there. And then especially later, and this will tie up with the end times. So let me mention it right away. I think you know it also that uh, uh, Esau, so like a, a great grandson of, uh, of uh, no, a grandson of Abraham, mm -hmm. uh, Esau, he was a great hunter since he was young. Very at young age, he was already a hunter. And I think he was very good and very strong. Well, I don't know if you know that, but there was some animosity between Nimrod and Abraham's family, what I said. And Esau was someone that Nimrod was jealous of. And Esau was just a teenager. And Nimrod was already 200 and something years old. So what happened is Esau knew this. So he saw his chance when Nimrod was hunting with some of, two of his generals. Esau killed Nimrod. Did you know that? Have you read that? No, I did it's not in, know that. It's in Jasher. Yeah. It's in Jasher. Esau killed Nimrod. Yet. But yeah, this, I haven't seen that yet. Okay, this explains a lot. Because first of all, Esau run, he, or he ran, is that the past tense? Ran uh, to his home because he thought the whole army of Nimrod is behind me. My life is worth nothing anymore. And that is when Jacob... When he he made the the that 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 lentil soup, mm -hmm. then he asked him, "Give me some soup." Uh, and Jacob said, "If you give me your birthright." That's right. Yeah. And people always thought, and I also, I thought, why did he sell his birthright for a uh, for a uh, a plate of soup? You know. But now I understand because now knowing that he killed Nimrod, he thought my life is worth nothing. They're going to find me and kill me. So that's why he thought, I mean, you can have my birthright. I will have my soup as my meal before execution. You know, I don't know the English word of that, but that I want now, that soup, nice. and then I will be killed. So that's the reason why he did that. That is the mm. background. Yeah, that's see, that, see that's, that's what I mean about kind of, and like you yeah. said, you always take it with a grain of salt, but, you know, some of the things... In scripture, it just moves from the important point to the next important point, which is, exactly. yeah, we're trying to, you know, it's scripture. But, yeah. you know, there's a lot that went behind it. Just like us today, there's a lot that, that goes into it and why people make the decisions they make. To see some of that insight is pretty, pretty neat. It makes it more yeah. human. It makes yes. it more yes. um, believable. I mean, True. it's not that I don't believe it, but it just, it shows you just how intricate everything is and how yeah. god just wove every emotion and thought into yeah. what happened so much exactly. went into it and god controls yeah. it all and the thing is if you look at the third eon let's say the third eon let's limit ourselves to the third eon for now 
then you will see that the red line, the red thread in everything in the third eon is, is Babylon. Is, is that Babylonian worship thing. Mm -hmm. That is the red line that connects everything with everyone in, in that sense, in the third eon. So if you, um, if you make a connection to the end times, I've always wondered also, why do people, when they flee to the desert at the moment of in the future of the abomination of desolation, when that, when that, uh, um, well, let me say that beast out of the sea will put himself in the temple, people will flee from Judea to the wilderness and probably they will be safe in Edom. Edom, there is Petra, that city Petra in the rocks. And yes. people think, and I also think, still think, that there is the, the place where they will kept secret. They, they, be, they, will be, they will be safe. But the thing is, why are they safe there? I mean, the beast has worldwide power. So why can't he touch them there at Petra in Edom? But if you make the connection now, then you think, wait a minute. Edom is Esau. It's Esau's possession. It's his land, his, and, uh, his uh, descendants. So that's one. And I think that the beast out of the sea has something to do with Nimrod. I think he has something to do with Nimrod. I don't know how yet, but I, I don't know if you remember this, but when uh, uh, the push was there in the time of President uh, um, George Iraq. W. Bush, yes, Iraq. Yeah, yes. I heard and that. the I army heard went that. to Iraq, and then immediately when they were in Iraq, I mean like 175,000 artifacts were stolen from the museum of Baghdad. So you think, what is the what is what is going on here? And then a, a few days later already, most of the artifacts were, were already um, located. They were found and they were brought back to the museum. But I think appro approximately 3,000 of those artifacts were never found because people say they were brought back to the USA. And one of the important artifacts is the sarcophag of Gilgamesh. But who is Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh is Nimrod. Nimrod. Yes, yeah. he is Nimrod. And I think just before the army went to Iraq, I think one month, not even, before the army went to Iraq, it, was, it became known that the sarcophag of uh, Gilgamesh was found. So you, you put things together and you think, whoa, what are they going to do with that DNA? What are they going to do? That's the thing. It's very interesting, but I think that beast has something to do with Nimrod. And yeah. that's why Edom is safe, a safe space for the beast. Yeah, and going back, um, you know, I just want to paint the picture of, um, you know, how the, the sons of Elohim in Genesis 6 corrupted humanity and yeah. humanity became evil. But you look at the stories of Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, Babylonian mythology, um, any mythology you want to want to speak of, they're all very similar stories exactly. with with different names. And all of that stems from what happened, I believe, in, in Genesis six when yeah. these men of renown as Genesis calls it giants. They're yeah. called elsewhere. Um, yeah. Wreaked havoc on on the earth, and yeah. many yeah. of them were leaders, as it says, men of renown, great yeah. men. Yeah. You know, half sons of Elohim, half human, yeah. and they went nuts, ruled the world, and yes. and caused all sorts of evil. But and they they are the stories of renown. Like yeah. when you look at oh, how great was these people are these gods, half gods in Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, that same thread is woven in 
in all of those cultures and you can get that all the way up to the occultists of today that yep. same thread is woven in from those beings that were created from the sons of Elohim yes and they were all that's very interesting without exception all these nephilim these giants they were all violent they were violent all of them and also humanity because humanity was also corrupted blood wise and also corrupted thinking wise in terms of making war so it was one violent um mess on the earth uh, in in those days especially uh, uh very closely before the uh, before the flood it's what crazy yeah. yeah and i and i was i was taught in sunday school that humanity was just drinking a lot of beer and having <laughs> sex with women and having yeah. wild parties you know oh. it's, it's a bit deeper than that exactly but, but going to um you know after the flood um when nimrod came on the scene and and went to the land of was it shinar shina shinar uh yes yeah, shinar you mean where they, uh, uh, where they eventually uh, built the the tower, yeah, tower of Babel. yeah of shinar yes so you know they said whatever it was you know i used to think it was you know some dna altering thing or perhaps a portal or perhaps they wanted to get it high enough to escape another judgment by flood but in in jubilees it's it actually gives the height of the tower of babel and how they've been working on it for 43 years and the height if if you take a modest estimate a modest estimate it's twice as high as the tallest building in the world right now which is the the, the burj the burj khalif yes which is like 2700 feet something like that yeah. and yeah. If if you take a cubit to be one foot, which I think it was a lot more than that, it was 5,344 feet, I think Jubilee says, which is twice as high. It could be yeah. could have been up to four times as high. So I okay. really think they were trying to actually get to the throne room of God and, yeah. and fight him. But regardless, the statement made in scripture says that they did it to make a name for themselves exactly to separate the, from yeah. from god and make a name for themselves and right. i find it very interesting that as you fast forward some years and king nebuchadnezzar becomes king of babylon then yep. daniel chapter 4 he goes through the same thing where he's saying i built babylon i am yes. great i did all this and then he yeah eats grass with cattle for seven yeah. seasons and then he yeah. comes and says god can do whatever the hell he wants <laughs> with yes. the people of the earth yes. and with I the armies that. of heaven yeah. Yeah. and no one can say what have you done and no one exactly. can stop him that's yeah. basically what he said yeah. but it was his human achievement at that yeah. very same place where the tower was built to build a name for themselves that human achievement had to be struck down yes. for him to come to that realization that god exactly. is god and he does everything yeah. And I draw that connection to the third temple as well, because the man of lawlessness cannot get people to worship him unless he gets them to worship self first. And that's why I think, you know, 666 is the number of humanity. Exactly. And Satan in the garden didn't have Adam and Eve um, worship him. They got nope. them to to try to become like God by a self act by exactly. eating the fruit. Yeah. And now Satan uses self, society, religion, all about humans attaining God instead of God being God. And so the occultist and this new age religion and what our governments are going to lead us into is self enlightenment. You That's know, it. you can yeah. be like these aliens or you can be like these gods yeah. that'll be disguised as aliens, I think. But you yeah. can only get there by doing what we tell you to do and evolving like we evolved yes. with this self-enlightenment. And exactly. only once he convinced, then he can say, okay, be like me, worship me, and you can get there. So it's yeah. all intertwined all throughout scripture from start yeah. to end. It's yes, about true. self yeah. being the idol that puts yourself in front of god and then yeah. christianity we know is the same today because yeah. it's just whitewashed and it's yes. self saving yourself as opposed yes. to truly trusting that god does everything yes unbelievable yeah this is a red thread 
uh, in terms of worship. That red thread goes all the way onto, until the end times, until Christ returns. That's true. And it starts, of course, I believe at least, uh, at least that uh, it starts with the, uh, with the opening of the first seal. And then after that will be the start of the 17th week of Daniel. And there will be like that whole period in the beginning will be that fake peace, that false peace. And why is it false? Because it will feel like peace. It will feel like that. I'm sure of that. It will be very deceptive and it will be looking and feeling very uh, genuine. It will be feeling like that. But it will be based on self. It will be based on human will. Uh, they will, uh, uh, what is the word? They will attribute those uh, those um, that peace that period and that pros uh, prosperity probably to them to themselves yeah, and he has done it yes and we have overcome the evil and yes. we have to choose to overcome that evil to set yes. up you know this exactly. peace and prosperity exactly that's where the that's where the the rubber will meet the road it's the self at uh, uh, exactly and then it will it will morph through a lot of other things like war, famine, uh, pestilences, and death, it will morph through to the worshiping of the beast. Then it will happen. So after the second, third, and fourth seal, then the opening of those, then you will see that probably that leader will be assassinated. I mean, I think you can you can see that clearly in scripture. And then after three days, you know, that, that copycat thing, then his body will be animated by that spiritual being coming out of the sea. And of course, there will be also a false prophet, the, the, that spirit from the land, so from, <coughs> from Israel. So I think it will be a, um, an, an Islam, uh, well, predominantly an Islamic system, a religious system. And Islam will be the, be the, uh, the dominant part of it. So you said, um, I have a question for you. You said um, that we're at 5,990 from Adam. Yeah. And uh, so how, A, how, how do you come to that year? And B, what do you see going on in the Middle East right now that kind of leads to that end time scenario with Islam and all that? Okay, first of all, um, uh, if I, uh, I have a chronology series uh, on uh, Refaho channel. So if you follow that, it has only scriptural input. No uh, extra bi biblical or extra scriptural input. The only one exception that's 70 AD, but everybody agrees with 70 AD. But apart from that, Every input in the in that chronology from Adam to the return of Christ and beyond to the end of this eon is only scriptural information. So from there, I, up till now, I haven't found any mistake and no one has been able to point out any mistake on that chronology. And according to that chronology, um, uh, we are now in 5990, in the year 5990. So wow. that's so why. The, there's no gaps or anything in that you can count all the way through. That's amazing. All the way, no gaps whatsoever. Every uh, every detail, every information is from Scripture, and God makes sure that that is possible for us to, with some diligent work, to really find the chronology and to to work with that. God, I mean, it's God inten God's intention. He buried information. Yes. But with diligent seeking, you can find it and you can build up a chronology. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I think there are some very important assumptions that ne need to be taken into account. And one of them, as an example, is that in scripture, uh, a period, let's say, let me mention one example. Um, when God said to Noah, uh, go in the ark, and then in seven uh, in seven days, I will close the door myself, and then the, the flood comes. But 
that seven days scripturally is for us six days because we count exclusively and scriptural counts inclusively. What do I mean? A, a, a baby boy, when did he uh, have to be circumcised? On the eighth day. But on the eighth day, let's say he's born on Sunday. We would say on the eighth day is not the next Sunday because that would be the seventh day for us, but it would be the Monday after that, right? But that's not scriptural. Scripture says the eighth day because they include that Sunday when they start counting. It's inclusive. So from Sunday to Sunday is eight days. So he had, it's in, for us, it's seven days. You see the point? Mm -hmm. So you don't count that Sunday. If you go Sunday to Monday, it's one day to us. But in scripture, it's two days. <laughs> so those assumptions are very important when you work with chronology, with periods, mentioning of pre periods, and also the ages. When Adam was 130 years old, he, he begot Seth. But that 130 year, he was not 130 years yet. He was in his 130th year. Those assumptions are very important. So you have to really calculate with those things. So assumptions need to be taken into account, but those assumptions need to also be scriptural. So this is just an example. Yeah, the so that's why I know it's 5990 up till now. Yeah. The Book of Jubilees, I, I have not done or counted anything like that, but it, they make it easier because they just count by Jubilees in um, <laughs> yeah. how, when everything happened. So Okay. And what, what year do, uh, uh, are have, they arriving at at that time? Not sure? Oh, I, no, I haven't. Okay. I haven't studied it. I just thought okay. it was interesting that, you know, they say, you know, he was four Jubilees and you know, four weeks. I don't know what, how that plays in the four weeks and stuff like that. Um, but I just thought it was interesting that. Okay. That nice. They, that they give that information, but scripture does too. Of course they give that oh, yeah. information, which just leads so much planning to it. I mean, yep. you look at the detail. I mean, you talk about a God that plans each and every detail of every life. Exactly. You can't have yeah. this without yes. that. And, Exactly. And it really yeah. and it really goes shh, and it really goes. I was shushing my dog, not you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I could it really, hear the, the bark. It really goes to what we're talking about. I always try to bring it back to the sovereignty of God against man's free will, because that's what it's all about. It's it's about from the very beginning, from people going against and denying God to go to these small G gods yeah. and us today doing the same thing with self is woven throughout everything we do and every deception there is. The apostle Paul wrote against self-righteousness more than anything. He wrote entire letters, right. yeah. keeping self law, the flesh out of his message. Exactly. And yeah. everything that we come to from what you were talking about, the chronology to to prophecy that Christians love, to every detail of these people's lives woven together in a time fabric that's so unique and so exact. You can't get any of that without the complete mm -hmm. and utter sovereignty of God apart from man doing anything independently of God. And yet Amen. people want to put their faith in prophecy and yet they don't think that God's sovereign. How can you believe in prophecy if exactly. God isn't sovereign and yeah. man can do what he wants? It makes no sense. It just shows you how the lie of self is, is it. That's the deception. Yeah. And, and it blinds their eyes. It yeah. blinds them totally because they don't see the contradictions at all. And any deception is going to have that element and self of self in it. Yes. And the only way to know that you won't fall for that end time deception is to know or any deception with regard to God is to know that God does absolutely everything. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. Absolutely. And, and also in a structured way and in a very symmetrical way as well. 
So your other question was about the Middle East. Well, it's in this day and age, mm -hmm. I'm a bit careful to talk too much, too deeply about that, of course. But uh, what you see um, in the Middle East currently, I mean, there's it's like a, uh, I, I have a Dutch word, but I don't know how to translate that in English. It's it's like a, a, a barrel of um, uh, what is the word that, that 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 thing that is explosive, you know, like dynamite, like dynamite, yeah, like, like a barrel of dynamite. It's oh, waiting. Yeah. It's waiting to be exploding. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going on there. What we see now is especially deception. It's deception. Definitely on both sides, if you know what I mean. And uh, uh, I think that the the country we see now, now that everyone knows, the country that is in the in the center of attention, that is not the country of God yet. I mean the the land is of God, yes, that is God's land. But the people are, of course, not God's people on the one hand, but it's, it's even worse than that. I think the, these things that you see are attempts, and they're going to go far with that, attempts to establish a, a millennial kingdom, so-called, without God. So from of themselves, they are not willing to wait for God to 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 do it in his timing they want to do it in their timing and they want to do it in their own power and that's what you see right now in the middle east so that's how, how i see it and and i mean there are some very exciting developments right now because i've i've seen um uh, a, a video where uh, iran raised a flag the black flag First time in history, the black flag of the Mahdi, the Mahdi, that is the, uh, that is the Muslim um, leader, Messiah, Sorry, the Muslim yeah. Messiah, yeah. And this is huge. This is really huge because, I mean, this is a huge indicator also where we are because if Iran, I don't know if you know uh, Islam a little bit, but there are two very important factions. There are the Shiites, the Shia, and the Sunni Muslims. Mm -hmm. And Sunni is by far the greatest uh, faction, the greatest portion. But the, the, the two leaders of the Sunni part is, uh, they, you, you could say Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Those two are the leaders, you could say, as countries, as nations. And Iran is the leader of the Shia part. And those two, they don't, they don't get along at all, at all. They have a huge animosity towards each, towards each other. So there is a, a, a vision in Daniel 8, talking about a ram with two horns, of which the second horn was bigger than the first horn. And uh, you see that, I, I mean, this is crazy stuff. This ram is Iran, is, is Persia. Persia is Iran. So that's the ram, and that ram is powerful. And that second horn is even greater, so that's a greater leader that still has to come on the scene. Probably that will be that Mahdi. However, if Sunni, a Sunni is not going to accept that Mahdi, that, that Messiah from the Shia part, they are not going to accept him at all. So I think there's going to be a huge attack on Iran from another country. And that country will be very important in the end times. And that country is Turkey. Very important what will happen in the end times. Turkey will play a very pivotal role in the end times, especially religion wise. <clears throat> so they will attack Iran and that will be the goat with one horn and they will really with such a speed he will he will uh, uh, penetrate the ram you can read that in Daniel 8 very interesting and you could say that happened in the past yes you know how prophecy works it is uh, very often multi-layered so it has a meaning back then but it also has a meaning under the ground another layer for the future.
And in, I think, verse 15 through 17, you can read that it is for this is a prophecy also for the times of the end. So this will happen. And I think that goat with the one horn is Turkey. And that ram with the two horns is Persia or Iran. So these, these things are very close now. Super close. I mean, I, I can assure you that the Sunnis will not accept the Messiah of the Shia. No way. So there will be like something. So they will be conquered, I think, Iran by Turkey. Turkey has a huge army, very strong army. And I think by that they will form a kind of a coalition later, especially when that war or that invasion of Gog, of Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39, will happen. They will invade Israel from the north. And that will include Turkey and Iran. And so, that, we know that there's a battle of, well, it doesn't really happen, but Gog and Magog after the thousand years. Yes. Now, that's another you're one. You're speaking of the one in the that end times up to the millennial. Yes. Yes. There will be one in the end times and one at the end of the millennium. Yes. There it talks about Gog and Magog. But in Ezekiel 38, 39, it talks about Gog of the land of Magog. So that's different. Okay. So the things playing out in the Middle East really look to be coming together for that. And it could happen tomorrow. It could happen three years from now. Well, uh, I can be wrong about this, but up till now, my thinking is that that prophecy regarding concerning Israel is not fulfilled, will not be fulfilled, and is never fulfilled within the administration we are living on now, within this secret administration that will end with the snatching away. I think so you that, think it will happen after the snatching away? Yes. So I'm talking about fulfillment of prophecy. What we see now is all the pieces are put on the on the board, on the chessboard. You know, all the all the whole scenario is being made ready and being prepared for all all that will happen in the end times. But it it's not fulfillment of certain prophecy yet. One very important and well known prophecy is Isaiah 17 verse 1, where it talks about the total destruction of Damascus. And Damascus is the oldest city in the world that is continuously inhabited. It's the oldest city. Maybe already um, 4,000, more than 4,000 years old. But but Damascus will be, and it, it has never been fulfilled that yet, that prophecy. So it will be fulfilled in the end times, I think after the snatching away also. But it's now, very close. It's very close. Now, Damascus has been in some battles and been compromised, but it's never been wiped off exactly the face of the earth, like Isaiah says. Correct. Yes. True. True. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, these things are um, close, I think. They are waiting to be happened, to happen. And uh, I still think, again, uh, I, I'm still thinking what prophecy I know of, at least, has been fulfilled within this secret administration. I cannot come up with one. There's only one question mark with me, and that is Psalms 83. Psalm 83 talks about uh, countries in the immediate vicinity of Israel just immediately around Israel, like Egypt, Jordan, you know, uh, Syria, and uh, and Lebanon, and and uh, how um, they want to destroy uh, Israel. And there's one Bible teacher I know, he says that has been fulfilled just a couple of days after Israel became a nation in 48. But that's true that these nations... They were attacking Israel after e only a week of being a nation. So, but I don't know if that was the fulfillment of that Psalm 83 prophecy. I'm not sure. Not sure. 
it's possible. It's possible. So, but for the rest, I don't know of any prophecy that has been fulfilled. So the, these are very interesting times we live in. You, you, you see so clearly that that all the, 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 the pieces are put together. And I have to say, there's still one huge um, question mark with me, at least, with regard to the USA. The role of the USA is so mysterious in my in my view because the USA is still the, by far the strongest country on earth i i can tell you easy hands down it's it, it, they have hidden things that people don't know about and only military knows so i know they are the strongest but the thing is something must happen something must happen there that they will not be the leading country anymore not sure what it is but something will happen and if you if you look at how they are spiritually now, USA, wow, that's that's um, that's terrible. So it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So in the Middle East, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you see they they are they are looking at each other. They are like um, they are are they are spying on each other. Let me put it like that. And Israel is a very strong, militarily very strong nation. I mean, I think the strongest nation in that area by easy, easy. Yeah, Maybe you, one of, I think one of the strongest in the world. Yeah, and you, you look at the deception. I mean, we know that we have people in our, for years, that have been trying to destroy our country from within and yes. you know opening the borders and yes um well everything else everything yeah. they've done really yeah. has been yeah. to, to weaken us and you look at what happened that started this whole thing in israel is a deception i mean it, yeah. it's not a deception in the sense that it didn't happen because it happened but to think that israel being as powerful and as on edge as they have always been for thousands of years living or you know let's say since they became a nation again living in an area where you have to be on guard constantly to yes. let your guard down and allow that to happen and then have this kind of response yes. is definitely um fishy yeah but you know the only people that aren't in on it are those that are innocently that are innocent and getting killed it's those are terrible. the people that yeah. aren't in on it yeah so false flags are are so frequent nowadays everywhere i would say things that happen under false pretense but there are casualties there are always casualties yeah. it's terrible yeah. it's the terrible destruction yeah. and death is real it's just yes. the reasons behind the reasons, it yes are not yes. and and that's uh, that's just unfortunate for the innocent people that have to bear the brunt of that. Yes. By the way, but I have to add that if you look at look at everything that's happening, how pain, uh, no, no matter how painful it is, if you look at it at it from the forty thousand view, let me put it foot view, then uh, then you could say, okay, God is the director of everything. And all these casualties, all these people who were killed innocently, they will be resurrected and they will be, uh, what is the word, reimbursed? Is that the word? They will be royally sure. reimbursed. They will be put on the, on the new earth and they will lead a fantastic life. So, and, and by the way, in the time that they are dead, how, how, no matter how long that is, in their experience, it's not even a second. Not even a second. So I want to add that all, all also because for people, for the listeners and the watchers to realize that God has everything under control and he is directing everything and he will also make everything right at the end. He, he will do it. It's his responsibility. And he does that for absolutely everyone. We all exactly. have to go through whatever level of evil that god has decided yes. for us to go through and he yes. will give us a greater joy that we can't even imagine 
based specifically on what we went through in yes. that evil form. And we'll find out that, I know it's hard to say now, but we'll have a deeper joy and oh, deeper yeah. understanding of God having gone through whatever evil that we've gone through and what those exactly. people have to go through yes. than we would and, have had if they never had that experience. And also the other way around, because people in this day and age, as an example, who became rich at the expense of others, people who killed at the expense of others in order to get more power, whatever, and what reason. All those people, the, the peoples who do, do, do these crimes, they will also pay for them. When they are standing at the great white throne, oh boy, you will pay, you will pay, and it will be dearly. You will feel it. It will be terrible because uh, rem uh, just think about uh, 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 a spine that is totally crooked and when it has to be put str put uh, straight again, oh boy, <laughs> that will hurt. So that's also this the other side of the same coin. God will put everything straight. So yes, on the one hand, for the people who have suffered at the hands of these people, also for these people on the other hand, they will be put straight also, and that will hurt like uh, hell, <laughs> like imaginary hell. Yes. Yeah. And God, God is righteous. That's the point. He is righteous and he, he will make things right. Absolutely. And for everyone, for every exactly. creature that he ever created. Yes, exactly. But yes, many will have to go through judgment and it won't be pleasant, but it is correction. Exactly. In it is end. correction. It's all correction and correction can hurt. Yes, yes, but it's necessary. So going uh, back to the link between past and future, if you want, um, I would say uh, that it is to me now <laughs> so clear that I see also on the ground, uh, even literally on the ground, that that Babylonian worship, I see that all through the whole third eon. And it started with Babylon and it will end with Babylon. Babylon, the, the destruction of Babylon will be the last thing, if you want, of this eon. I mean, uh, I, I would say together with Armageddon. That will be the last thing in terms of judgment. So um, uh, that's why I keep on, I, ma I maintain my few point that the Roman, we are still in the Roman Empire, politi political-wise. We are still in the Roman Empire since the Roman Empire came into existence. But it is a Roman Empire in another way. And it has gone on the ground. So we haven't noticed that. But everything was and still is the Roman Empire. All the land on earth belonged first to the Queen of Britain. And through the, through via the Queen, it belonged to the Vatican. So things like that. And all the time... On the ground, in secret, we still lived in a Ro in the Roman Empire, and I believe also looking at the statue, the 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 what is the statue of Nebuchadnezzar? There are no gaps. There are no gaps between the empires, because uh, what what should be the gap? We are still in the eras of the nations, and it started with Nebuchadnezzar, political wise, and it will end with the beast. In the end times, that's why where it will end. And uh, religion-wise, it started with the early re religions like Buddhism, and with guys as Confucius and Zarathustra, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and Hinduism, etc. And it will end with that world religion, one world religion, in the end times. Well, there's no doubt that the end time world religion and what these people are doing has been in secret and underground yep. for years yes i mean that's, that's their whole agenda is the way they communicate um as far as the roman you know i don't know much about that i haven't done a deep study on it but i i know um from what i've looked at that 
what you see going on in secret in the the occult and who these people whether it's um the freemasons or oh, yeah. um you know all the all these secret societies and occult, you listen to what their core beliefs are i mean some of them actually go back and talk about nimrod and talk about yep. the tower of babel and they talk about these small g gods and this self enlightenment that is just woven through all of scripture so they yeah. they keep that a secret just like satan kept you know adam and eve from worship he keeps that a secret and he he keeps it a secret by having them focus on self he keeps yeah. it a secret today by having people focus on self that's why society is driven by selfies and and the self-made yeah. man and yeah. that's been going on for years self yeah. religion every religion that there is is self it's self it's man's yeah. attempt to get to god every religion has things yeah. you have to do to get you in that if other people don't do it they're not it's all about self none of it yeah. is about God being God, as Paul says in Acts 17, when he destroys religion and says, you cannot give to God anything that he hasn't first given to you. That's in Romans exactly. 11. But he yes. said, God is not attended by human hands. That means that he's not attended by human hands. He doesn't need you to do anything because he gives to you life and breath and all, and he gives exactly. that to all. And we yes. live and move and have our being and exist in him. In him. Yes. So there's no religion takes you out of him in order for you to get to him. And that's yes. self. And that's what masks everything is self. Yes. And but, a very important consequence of self is pride. Yes. And that's what leads to looking for that self enlightenment that Satan exactly. will Yes. Produce that these small G gods, that the Freemasons, that all these people that do this in secret promote. Yes. If you look and, into it, it's the yes. same thing. And looking at those those uh, those small G gods, I think uh, looking at um, uh, Re Revelation 12, uh, you read about a woman uh, clothed with a sun. That is that is a depiction of believing Israel, faithful Israel. But there is a dragon also, that's Satan, that's being told that there in the same chapter. But his, his tail is sweeping one third of the stars and cast them onto the earth. So what stars is that? I think it's heavenly <coughs> or celestial beings. <coughs> so celestial beings will be coming onto the earth before... The dragon himself, the, 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 the serpent, is cast on the earth. So before he comes on the earth, at the I would say at the half, midpoint of the seven years, there will be other beings on the earth. They will be cast on the earth, and they, were already, they will already, as you said, uh, uh, they will maybe uh, impersonate aliens or whatever, and they will be also uh, having their contribution, if you want, to what will happen in the end times. And that will be crazy. I mean, also already in the first half of that seven years, it will be crazy. Crazy stuff will happen. That's what oh, I think. Yeah. People will see things that, you know, they saw back in the times of Noah. I mean, I, exactly. I mentioned it already, but it's not just, you know, Jesus saying that people are going to be drinking beer and having sex and not worrying about God. I mean, you know, maybe that's part of it. But as in the days of Noah, they saw some crazy shit. I mean, giants yeah. eating people. I mean, yeah. you know, DNA yeah. being messed with. You yes. know, who knows exactly. what creatures were around at that time that that you can look at if you do some research that they've been yeah. DNA manipulating yeah. God's creation in secret. And back then, throughout the last few back, years, yes. hundreds, well, not yeah. hundreds of years, maybe, but you can you, you could see it everywhere if you look yeah. at it. Back then, that, that was I don't think it was uh, prim uh, primarily through technology, but in the end times, it will be and those uh, beings and technology that will corrupt human DNA both transhumanism and those beings that will be coming on the earth 
and maybe also animals, you know, so, so it will be like crazy, crazy things people will see on the streets. That's what I think. And that is, and that combined with maybe also some prosperity and that, that peace, so to speak, that peace, that fake peace. So people will think, my God, this is my time to party, to party. To, to have a crazy life, things that I always wanted to do, things like that. And you will see crazy stuff on the earth, yes, definitely. Definitely. And, and it will be even worse, I think, than the, uh, than the days of Noah. That's what I think. And that's how this eon will end. Yeah, it'll but, get as evil as it can be before... Yeah, exactly. ...before it, it turns. And this but, eon is the worst eon. We yeah, know that. But, but self, another going back to self, is that Christians promote it, people promote it um, from other religions, and yes. people that don't have a religion, they want to yeah. clean up the world yeah. and make it better, and that's not going to happen because Jesus Christ is going to do that. Exactly. It's yeah. going to get as evil as it can possibly be, all the evil that God has written in it, will max out and then Jesus will come. The exactly. self wants to clean it up by self and present, look at what, what we did now. Yeah. But that doesn't make any sense because Jesus is coming to save the world, not congratulate it. And he's exactly. saving it from the worst evil that it's ever been in, which exactly. is driven by yeah. Wow. 666 yeah. six, six, yeah. humanity and yes. what they think they can do apart from God, which exactly. is nothing. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm totally on the same page. By the way, have you seen my special report about the snatching away and the return of Christ? The one before or just recently? Recently. A couple of like, weeks ago, like three weeks ago. I, I'm not yeah, sure. I, well, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. So there you see that I, I believe that Christ will return earlier than people normally think that he returns. He will not return at the end of the seven years. He will return one year earlier. And that also coincides with the fact that the 1260 days of the Great Tribulation, that will not be the case. It will be shortened with one year one year 360 days let me put it like that so then will christ come so then uh, because of his chosen ones those days will uh, be cut short so then he will of course gather from all the corners of the earth he will gather his elect and put them and i think he was, he will bring them in a place where they are safe i think again edom so uh, why do I mention that? Because also I explained that the days of Noah was and the days of Lot were things that were mentioned by Christ when he was talking about the end times. It will be like the days of Noah. But if you look at all the things that happening that were happening in the days of Noah, you can you can already easily draw the line towards the future. But also the length of the judgments but because that judgment in the day of Noah was the flood. And if you look at the total length of the flood, it was one year and 10 days. And the nice thing or the interesting thing is that Jesus will come at the beginning of the last year of the seven years. The last year. And that last year is a Sabbath year. And a Sabbath year before a, jub a jubilee year that Sabbath year is always 10 days longer. Can you imagine that? Can you feel? So again, at, at the moment Jesus comes, at the start of that Sabbath year, then the judgment, the real judgment on the nations will start. And that's the trumpet and bowl judgments. And they will last exactly one year and 10 days. And it will end on Yom Kippur, of the year 2033 and Jesus will return ju just uh, this is only a calculation mm. I can be wrong but according to the chronology he will return in September beginning September of 2032 so 
And then from 33 to 34, there will be the Jubilee year as the last year, the 6,000th year from Adam. And that is the year uh, in which this eon will end. So uh, we are very close at the end uh, of this eon already. Very close. And uh, I think a lot has been crammed. Uh, all the things that will happen in Revelation, I mean, almost all the things, they have been crammed together for a very, to happen in a very short period. Yeah. And that's why John says it will happen swiftly. Yeah, once swiftly. it starts, it'll happen yeah. fast because it's all in place. It's all getting exactly. in place right now. And I, yes. I think once the snatching away occurs, then it'll it'll be full force. And yes. Yes. It'll just be like a snowball going down a hill. Just exactly. Yeah. Taking but all because, the prophecy with it. Yeah. The withholder has been removed. So now it's free play. It's like uh, the genie out is out of the bottle and it's going to be crazy. That's what I think as well. So, yeah, wow. uh, a lot, a lot is happening right now already and a lot behind the scenes. Also, let let's not go there now, but it's a lot happening behind the scenes and uh, in the world, in the world. And those things, if you know a little bit about them and I know that you know it, that then you see that all those things, they will burst forth all of a sudden. And my suspicion, just my suspicion is that the moment these things will burst forth from behind the scenes to in front of the scenes, that is approximately the same period of the snatching away. Yeah, I, that's what I, I agree think. With that. Because, I agree with that too. Because these developments, when they burst forth from behind the scenes, I think they will take with them a huge change on Earth. There will be a huge, something will change in the whole atmosphere on the earth it will change and people will know people who are let's say quite conscious my brother is one of them he is conscious he knows so he, he keeps an eye on where peter is so i know that so he will be he will be feeling like something has happened here something something has changed peter let me let me call peter let me see if he's still here i think like that i think that will happen if people are conscious they will know, they will feel something has changed on the earth. And that is, I think, those energies, those frequencies, vibrations of good that we have never felt before. That will come on the earth and that will change things. And that will be also one of the biggest, the bigger parts of the deception that God himself will send on the earth. According to 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, 10, 11, something like that. So... There's a lot boiling. <laughs> there is. There is indeed. And oh, yeah. and when it, when things do go down, I mean, confusion is the name of the game. You know, I, yeah. I think that, you know, God confused the language of people at Babel. And I, I think that these same small G gods that, that rule and are building this tower of Babel with technology, um, so we can say are going to use confusion to bring people to that one world system again. So God yes. used confusion to destroy it. They're going to use confusion to get people in line. And you look at every prediction and every theory out there. I mean, there's a million different ways that this is going to go down and yes. it keeps people confused. And once it does go down, they can steer them in any direction they want because they've yeah. all heard it and they'll all have their theories. And then when someone comes and makes sense of it, then, you know, they'll have them. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, looking at God's structure, his way of thinking and, and, and operating the, the, the symmetrical and structured way in the beginning at the tower of Babel, he confused their languages and he spread them so that he, they had to spread, on the earth. So they had to find their own place, so to speak. And then a, an earthquake uh, came in the days of Peleg and that, and that tore the continent earth, uh, apart and it floated all the continent flow. They floated apart from each other. Let me put it like that. So now we have continents, we have islands, etc. 
in the future, it will be totally coming back. It will be converging again. And not only that, I believe that through technology, also the languages will be converging. Because thanks to, I think, quantum technology, I think there will be a possibility, a quantum mo module called quantum language, that we, are, we will be able, or humanity will be able to speak with each other through, uh, through technology and they can understand each other effort, effortlessly. That's what I think. So everything will come together. And also I think that through technology, the city of Babylon will be rebuilt very fast because of technology. It will be rebuilt very fast. That's what I think. So it will be huge. It will become huge. And um, <coughs> and people will flock. They will go, all of them, to Babylon because there is the wealth. There is the prosperity. And exactly the same thing where everyone went away. They diverged from Babylon in the beginning. In the end times, they will come back to Babylon. And the language will come back. And the continents through the earthquakes in the future, they will come back also. So... This is God's structure, man. This is God's symmetry. Symmetry. It's fantastic. <laughs> From start to finish. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's the director. Well, um, let's leave it at that then. Yeah, perfect. Um, and uh, maybe next time we can talk about uh, some of Paul's epistles. Yeah, that yeah is... <laughs> maybe we'll get back to that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, wanted, I think, yeah, yeah that's I where we are. Uh, uh, let's say... That's our home base. So yeah, let's absolutely. do that next time. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you very much for your time, Scott. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep in touch, definitely. Yeah, you too, Peter. I appreciate it. It's always great talking to you. Likewise, likewise, definitely. All right, brother. All the best. See you. All right, you too. Take care, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.